Welcome back to Let's Code, I'm Chris Biscardi, and today we've got a bit of an adventure on our hands. So here I've been working on a snake game for a, a workshop for Rust Adventure, and I was wondering if I could get it to run inside of a Tori app uh, as a desktop app and distribute it that way, because I think that would be cool. And you may be saying, yeah, Chris, isn't that, um, you know, going to be slower than distributing like a native desktop app? And uh, the answer is yes. Yes, it is. But that's not what we're after today. Today... All we're after is being able to play a bit of Snake inside of a Tori app. So the game works um, and whatnot, but I have no idea if it's going to compile to Wasm. So let's take a look. So Tori will be fine for like um, actually serving the assets, right? It's made to serve assets. It's a Rust backend and a JavaScript or HTML front end with images and whatever have you. So the first thing we need to do is make sure that we have the Wasm target installed from Rust up, which I think is Wasm32 unknown unknown. Let's do let's do a new branch. Oh, did I mess up? Can't run executable. Did I mess up? I must have messed up my new shell aliases. Uh, you get check out B Wasm. So now we have a branch to work on. I'm gonna cargo install Wasm server runner just as a test, basically. So like we're gonna try to build the snake bevy app um, and serve it using this wasm server runner, which is basically like an HTTP server. Um, but in this case for wasm specific kinds of stuff, let's get the, the VS code instance up here. So yeah, I've got a bunch of assets, a bunch of source code, and then I'm going to need uh, cargo, not comma cargo dot cargo uh, as config, I think config dot. And then we're going to have this um, target wasm32 unknown unknown, which is the target we just installed. And the runner for it is going to be wasm server runner, which is the thing we just installed. So now, theoretically, if I can spell, that would be make this so much easier. Um, so now we should be able to hopefully just compile and see our bevy app running as wasm. Now, I've never tried this, so I don't actually know if this is going to work uh, for this app in particular. I wasn't choosing libraries with the idea of like, hey, we should build this to Wasm. Um, but increasingly, I'm thinking that that's a good idea because people can put it on websites then. It's easier to share with friends and whatnot without having them install something. Um, so I'm really hoping that this kind of just works. So it looks like we've got the web server up at 12700, whatever, whatever. But unfortunately, that looks like a blank page. One really interesting thing about this right now is there's a whole section of the page that I can't right click on console. Okay. So let's see what we have unreachable time, not implemented on this platform. Ooh. Okay. So maybe we have to get rid of, uh, some stuff. If we go with the Wasm approach, there also seems to be some issues with the audio context. So we use Beva Kiri, ugh, Bevy Kira audio. I think that's how you pronounce that. Um, but Bevy Kira audio is you know, handling, playing sound effects and things like that. Um, let's do a search for Wasm. So we're using OG, the OG file format for our audio files here. Um, so that should be good for us because it says that Wasm support supports the OG feature. Uh, you can also do like MP3s, right? I almost did, <laughs> I almost did MP3s, but I'm happy I didn't. Um, Chrome requires an interaction with the website to play audio, a button click. This can be resolved with a script in your index.html. Okay, so, oh, I don't want to actually read anything right now. <laughs> uh, it looks like it's just a copy paste script. Um, so I think what we'll do is just leave it for now. And then when we do the Tori app, we'll have an HTML file and we'll throw this uh, audio script in there. So that should solve the audio context issue. Um, and then time not implemented on this platform is totally different thing. So time for us is going to be, uh, where's the speed running scoring? I think I called it. So in the sort of like speed running, like the, um, the segment of the snake app that records the time it took you to complete snake and also the score you got for that, uh, time. So like the speed running runs tracker, basically, um, these two systems right here are responsible for starting a timer and closing out the timer. And we use uh, instant.now for that. And I don't think that we actually are allowed to. I think this is the issue anyway. Let's let's go and see if there's any additional information. 
um this is time.rs i'm assuming this is the duration stuff if it's not the if it's not the instant now duration stuff then we'll have a different problem on our hands but let's just get rid of most of this let's get rid of yeah let's just let's just x the program out right so in our not in ui in main we have the plugin for the speedrun stuff and for now i'm just going to comment it out um, and maybe we can figure out how to get that back in for wasm but currently it doesn't work so let's take it out of here too i think that will be valid i do not know that that will be valid i didn't check any of the other files or anything um can't find scoring scoring speedrun is there another thing that i do in here oh it's just an import basically so we'll just get rid of that for the moment and this is on a separate branch so i mean like i don't really mind deleting everything right now okay looks like the server is back up okay so we get the game this is, this is significantly better um using exceptions for control flow don't mind me this isn't actually an error that is that is exactly what you want to see <laughs> <laughs> oh my god using exceptions for control flow don't mind me this isn't actually an error that is that is uh not great <laughs> it's probably not too bad um it says that we can ignore it so i guess we'll just ignore it um i think this type error at the top is from a chrome extension and then this log is the log that i usually see when i run the application itself um it does look like our font didn't load so i don't actually know if we're going to get the font to work it also doesn't look like the game is actually running okay unreachable did we get a new error state already queued okay let's let's refresh this um audio context wasn't allowed to start i think we can just ignore that but if we hit play we'd get nothing okay that was i think the issue here is that it's not loading in uh the sprite sheet for the actual snake result unwrap on an error value state already queued lib.rs90 okay so let's go over and check lib.rs90 we don't have oh wait no that's main <laughs> Whoops, uh, got to be in the right file. Okay, so run state menu, um, and then we unwrap here. Let's get rid of this game over sound in case it's like hard failing for some reason. This run state uh, set state for the run state menu is the thing that was actually allegedly causing the issue. Invalid operation, draw arrays, no buffer is bound to enable attribute. Play, uh, we don't see the snake. Snake hits the wall state already queued unreachable okay so this unwrap is preventing us from uh getting past it so we're just going to live with the warning that says that hey you know we should have uh i think this is a result all right so it's like run state that's set and then it could fail so we're unwrapping because it shouldn't ever fail and on desktop it never fails um but on the web it looks like there's an issue there so maybe we'll just ignore it and see if the program continues. Okay, so we do see, uh, uh, well, the snake, right? There is another bug, a different bug in the program right now um, that is preventing the, I'm just gonna play the snake a little bit so that it, it seems to be failing in the same spot every time. I actually don't know if the controls that I implemented work. That could be a different problem. Hmm. So this top one is the play button. This is the settings which should allow me to also click this, which all works. And this goes back to the original settings. Uh, the bottom one exits the app, so I'm not gonna click that. The top one starts to play and it'll run into the sidewall here. Um, and I think that one of the problems is that on desktop, this loads fast enough such that uh, the snake can be kind of like rendered appropriately, but on web, it doesn't seem to render fast enough. So I think this is enough to prove like whether or not we can actually get this into um tori or not right so like we don't have the font here i don't know well, let's take a quick look and see if we can fix that easily if not then i'm just going to continue and see if we can get the like it's like an 80 percent successful build right now like it mostly works i think we would also need to implement um like loaders for asset loading like don't start the actual game until the assets for the uh snake and whatnot actually load because those sprites do have to come down from the quote-unquote web server or whatnot um let's look for 
There's no mention of Wasm here, which is concerning because they use a, a like special type of font file, creating new fonts. It's this MSDF font or whatever. Um, you have to use a special tool to create the font file. I don't know if this will work on the web. And I don't know that there is, I don't think there's anybody using it like that at the moment. So we may just have to kick the can down the road on the actual font here. Uh, maybe file an issue later and see if, uh, see if this is supposed to work on the web. Like everything else works on, uh, about it on the web, right? So the, the buttons here are, uh, nine slice or what's referred to as nine slice images. Uh, it's kind of an old web, uh, anime or web, uh, image technique where each of the corners, uh, of a square image are kept intact, like aspect ratio wise, and then stretched. So the big green box right here is a giant nine slice panel. Each of these buttons is a nine slice image. Um, this, uh, snake grass and like stone here are all, uh, randomly generated like grid points that are also images. Um, and then the snake head itself, uh, although this is a bug in the rendering is also a sprite sheet. So we have a bunch of the assets loading. And I think that this modulo, a couple, like a couple things that I probably would have seen had I developed it on Wasm from the beginning, which is probably what I'll do in the future. If I plan to deploy to Wasm, um, this is, this is pretty working, right? Like the, the game works, it runs. Um, all of the, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. All of the settings and stuff are here and are working. Um, all of the audio is at least trying to run, you know, like, I think that, uh, I think we can pull this back out. I don't know why this is running multiple times. That's something that I would have to look into as well. Um, but yeah, so I think we can potentially take this, um, Wasm32 unknown debug. And then we've got our Wasm thing sitting here. So bevy snake dot Wasm, which I'm not going to look at because it's probably going to be gigantic. Actually, how big is it? Uh, LS target Wasm debug bevy snake dot Wasm um, pipe. Uh, they changed it from pivot to transpose and I'm never going to be able to remember transpose. <laughs> I will. I will never remember the word transpose for this. I might alias it. So 300 megabytes. For that wasm file that's quite big um obviously we haven't done anything to make it like actually small and we didn't even build with the release build so it may even get smaller if we did something like uh what is it run yeah run and then we like do release let's see if this wasm file gets any smaller and then there's additional like actual optimization that we can do that i'm not planning on doing on stream today hopefully this release build actually works as well hopefully we aren't breaking anything we're not really doing anything special, so TBD. It looks fine. Oh, look. Oh, dang. Oh, dang. So doing the release build actually loads all the sprites and stuff faster. That's actually really cool. That's really important to know, too. Um, so this <laughs> this is the Snake app that we are uh, going to try to put into a Tori app. Sick. That's actually a lot better. <laughs> I was so concerned for a second. Let's see. Is that the same one? I don't think it's still 324. That seems, oh no, you know what? Uh, I'm looking at the debug file. So we need to swap out debug here for release and 19 megabytes. Okay, so 19 megabytes is like totally reasonable. It's large, don't get me wrong. Like if I shipped 19 megabytes of JavaScript to a browser, uh, that would be a lot of JavaScript. But for a game, I think that nine, oh, it's much better than 324 anyway. So, okay, so now we need to get a Tori app running, right? So let's do, um, we'll call it snake hosters. I know let's do, uh, dub, dub, dub. I don't know. I'm old school. MPX create Tori, create Tori app. Uh, and then we do it here. What is your app name? Tori app. Let's call it snake snake. Um, should we do Vite? Can Vite do Wasm imports? I think it can. I think we're going to do Vite. So we're going to do create Vite. Uh, yes. Install the API package. No, we're not going to do view because I'm more comfortable with react. Yes. Okay. To proceed. Okay. So now we have a Tori app. Um, let's do this. Let's do move dub, 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 old, move old snake, dub, dub, dub under. Okay. So now dub, dub, dub is the Tori app. So NPM run dev, right? And then 
Do you think we need to copy this WASM file over? Can I just like pull a really janky look <laughs> import it directly? Let's do what? Do I just need to import it? Is that all that's going to happen here? I think I'm going to get rid of all of this stuff. Uh, get rid of the use state stuff. Get rid of this logo stuff. Even get rid of the CSS. So let's do, well, wait, let's see the page working first. If I can put it in a spot. Okay, there we go. So elements, of course, I would make this too small to actually see. Okay, elements in here, uh, body, root, app. This is our app. Congratulations, we have an app. So now we need to do what, like import uh, dot dot slash dot dot slash target uh, release. And then I think we can just do, we don't need to go into builds, do we? I think it's just snake.wasm. It's probably bevy snake.wasm. Now that I'm thinking about it. Uh, release, nope, not release, wasm32. Oh, that's the other thing. Target, wasm, release, and then bevy-snake.wasm. We save that. And everything crashes. I don't know. <laughs> Reload the page. Let's see a little bit of. Um, okay, so we do need to like initialize it here. Um, let's do import use effect from React because uh, we really only want this to go off once. Use effect function run once init. I don't think we want test. There's something wrong over here. Is the issue? Oh, from there we go. That'll that'll do it. So we load this and then we get a problem. WebAssembly.instantiate imported module. Module is not an object or function. Um, that's unfortunate. Module is not an object or function. What do we think that this means? It means that we messed something up somewhere along the way. It says we can do this. Um, see, do we need to do anything else? I didn't think we needed to do anything else for bevy wasm stuff but it is always possible that i am wrong oh you know what i think we might need to run wasm bind gen okay so let's see if we can do this uh let's go into rust adventure uh bevy snake and then we need to run something like we need to run wasm bind gen outdoor target web ah that's because i didn't install the right package there we go and then we try to read our thing Outdoor dot slash out target web dot slash target um, wasm release bevy snake dot wasm and then ls out has all of the stuff that we need, I guess let's stop looking at that and let's take a look at this so this is a bunch of functions this is also a bunch of functions this is I think this is the thing that we need to do. this is a heap setup audio context stuff is setting up here. This is a types file. That's also a types file. So we only really have two files here. We have the JavaScript file and the WASM file. So let's see if we can do this in target um, slash out slash bevy snake. And I think init is the wrong. Um, it's a, outside of the allow serve list. So let's just copy and let me do dot slash out bevy snake. Then we go here and hope we get a green flash. <laughs> Okay, so let's see what we've got. Load this, get a ton of errors. Uh, closure invoked recursively or destroyed already. I don't know that I need to init this anymore because we are now pulling in the import. I also don't know if I remove that, if V will still let that import stick around. <laughs> so I might need to like console log init or something, or I think it'll strip that import out. Okay, 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 okay. This is a bunch of wasm stuff. Async function init new URL. Okay, so the bevy snake dot wasm needs to be at the static directory or like the the public directory basically. So this file will copy and we'll stick in. I uh, forget they don't they don't create the public directory by default for some reason. Um, and I always forget where to put it. I think it's public and I think it's here. Oop, that is the wrong. Let's delete that. Uh, new folder, public. I think it's public and I think it's right there. So I think now if I do this and maybe we do need to call init. Uh, that's in render though. That's going to be a horrible, horrible idea. So we've got something happening. Let's do it in use effect. No work has been submitted this frame for log target WGPU core present. Let's see, promise pending. Let's clear this out. Maybe make this full screen unreachable. Okay, let's refresh 
And then that's an extension, the audio context thing that we were running into earlier that we can fix. This is another thing that we should ignore. Um, this is a bunch of the assets. The assets need to be here now too. So let's do that first. Let's take, I think it's just the assets folder and dump it into public. There we go. There we go. Memory access out of bounds. Okay. So we have a bunch of other issues that are still going on. Um, let's re reload this, but it does seem, yeah. Okay, cool. So this is actually working. The audio isn't working because, um, we didn't do that little script thing. So maybe we do that little script thing. I had that somewhere, right? Did I close that window out? That would have been awful. Um, this is yada, yada, yada. Where's our HTML over here? It's gotta be somewhere, right? Here's HTML. Um, this is the sound thing, I think. Why it's in the body. So we'll paste that in here. I don't want build sound. I just want kind of like, let's do, let's do web sound.js, I guess. We don't have the script, so that won't be there yet. Bevy game template. Oh, that's cool. This is a whole template. Uh, fonts, textures, audio. None of that is us. Build web sound.js. Okay, we need this file to go. Actually, is this going to pull it in for us? This looks like it's reading the index file. So maybe we do this. Maybe we do source sound.js. And in source, we do new file. And we do sound.js. Paste this in. And we hope that the Veet uh, demo gods are with us. It doesn't seem like that worked, but it may just be because I need to do like a, a rebuild or something. So many errors in the console here. I don't know if that's just like a general Wasm thing or not. Null function or function signature mismatch in Wasm. Use, <laughs> using exceptions for control flow. <laughs> Ignore me. Already borrowed. Closure invoked. Memory access out of bounds. It's all interesting. This all makes me feel like I didn't quite build it correctly. Okay, the audio context was not allowed to start. It almost looks like it like kind of works sometimes. I think it was working more consistently when um, the audio stuff wasn't involved. Is the audio stuff actually being included? Let's find out. Canvas, canvas, script, um, open a new tab. Okay, so this works. Well, it doesn't work, but it's running and I don't hear anything. Is that because I don't have my sound up? I think I was hearing it before when I was demoing it. So I think that the audio is just something that's going to be whatever, but this is the game technically. So there's a bunch of issues here, but this is the game running inside of like the Tori development environment. Yeah. There's a bunch of stuff here and I'm not sure which is important and which isn't. Um, this is lib.rs 133 in Wasm Bunge and Futures. So like these things are uh, bevysnake.js 412. I don't even know where that comes from. So like, I think realistically the best option that I have for fixing these errors is actually building up the game to be built for Wasm from the beginning, like setting up the Wasm build process and then going through the actual whole process uh, with Wasm as one of the like test targets that I'm constantly testing against. FN once called more than once. Yeah, it looks like there's some issues here and I'm not sure how many of them are actually me and uh, like build issues or how many of them are actually just like this doesn't necessarily or like this isn't something that you can just pack in after the fact without some work. Let's take a guess at the HTML stuff and do this. So the game works much better when I don't have, or much more consistently when I don't have the audio stuff in. So I'm assuming that the audio stuff is doing something uh, awkward, unfortunately, but it does work. The whole game works. This is inside of Tori's development environment. Um, it would be really cool to like send the high scores to some rust in the back end, like the back end of the Tori app or something. Um, I could also see this being used for like an easier multiplayer environment or something. I don't know. It's, it, it's just fun. It's fun for me to have, uh, to see the game running like in Wasm, like there are issues, right? But I'm also not done with the, the snake example. So I'm not too worried about them. I think the biggest one for us would be the font on these buttons isn't showing up. Uh, and I don't know if that's a kayak UI like issue, if that needs to be implemented, um, if it's even meant to be built for Wasm or if it's something else. And then I think the fixing the audio for sure. Uh, would be something that would be important if I was going to ship this uh, like this inside of a Tori app or something. 
uh, can I do this? Like, yeah, we've got this, but can I, can I get it to actually build a full app? That would be cool. Oh, that is, that is the wrong app. <laughs> um, give me a second because the app that I have here, uh, I need to kill a different process. <laughs> Uh, cause I have this running, this is interfering. Actually, this other V app is interfering. Let me kill that. Okay. Let's run it again. There we go. There we go. Oh my, that is not, not what you like to see. So I don't know what that is. That's weird. Oh, the audio works inside of the Tori environment. Ooh, you can probably hear it coming through my mic off my laptop. That's okay. Um, this is really unfortunate from a flashing per perspective, but the whole game works, which is really cool. I don't know what the pink is. The pink shouldn't be there. The pink should be, first of all, it should be green and it shouldn't be flashing. So I'm not really sure what the problem is there. Um, maybe there's something going on in the console. No, there's no, there's nothing going on in the console that would tell us what to do here. I don't know what the pink flashing stuff is. That's really confusing, <laughs> but we do have uh, a running snake app. So Snake does run inside of Tori, if that's the way that you want to distribute your game. Um, it's interesting that the window size doesn't quite get to the right spot. I'll put a flashing warning on the video because this is ridiculous. But uh, but yeah, so that's Snake uh, with Bevy compiled to Wasm uh, in a Tori app. And you could take this Tori app and you could send it somewhere. I'm going to turn that off because that flashing is so annoying. Um, but you could take that Tori app in package it up and send it to somebody. So that's kind of cool. You can put Wasm Bevy games inside of Tori and distribute them. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, Let's Code and uh, I will see you next time because that was kind of fun for me anyway. I hope you enjoyed it.